Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from the host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on a Langara. We shall be watching Tommy Gaga fighting for the second SS Panzer Division, forming a Kampfgruppe swiftly in response to an assault by no point of exception, aka chains fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 5th Infantry Division, starting out with the barracks right smack dab in the middle of everything actually, and that's a bit rare at this stage actually, usually again you see them at the edge, yes but apparently not for no point of exception, he is the exception to the rule <laughs> oh that was a terrible one we are seeing Panzer Gunners out here for Tommy Gaga while the Kettenkraut, I note he's standing out with the Kettenkraut, now the Schwimmwagen is heading more eastwards on the map so there you go. Training riflemen there. So far so good. Second squad of Panzer Grenadiers arriving there for Tommy Gaga. Point here being secured. Nice spread by no point of exception. And still apparently someone has now offered to sort of remake the latest trailer just with new music. So hopefully it again will allow my channel to get accepted and thus I can begin earning money. Of course, again, music will be different because, again, Call of Duty 2 music, which I can't use if I want to make money. So there you go. Swift little notification on the matter. Rather than going up here, Panzer is holding up behind Haystacks. Hoping none of them actually suffers from any allergies. Like there we go, point secured. The um, allies can't quite get to the fuel point right away, and that was probably partly the initial part. Of course, also this is rather the dominating part of this southern part of the map, in fact. And attack trap. Chain's definitely not taking any chances there, but interesting enough, he's not wired off this area. This also tends to be a nice spot to wire, actually. And there we go. Tommy Gaga rushing in a squad of Panzer Grenadiers, a small trio right there with the car 98 ks No upgrades for them with the Gewehr 43, but no! Change rushes into the house, catching the Panzer Grenadiers out in the open, raking them with bullets. At which point they quickly regroup to join in with the rest of their comrades. Fourth squad out for Tommy Gaga, what shall he be building? If anything, as of yet. And we are seeing two rifle three third squad on the way for no pointer exception, aka chains. There we go, two squads of riflemen. Albeit one man short, he did not make it. Trying to go in for harassment, but catch this or caught at least between two squads of Panzer Grenadiers. That is less fortunate. Chains rather penned in and back. It's not really securing any higher fuel points, whereas I mean Tommy Gaga has access to several. That's actually a slight disadvantage right there for no point exception initially. Third squad arrivement out. No, I mean, actual Panzer Grenadiers would also have access to MGs. In fact, they would have access to more MGs than, well, regular Grenadiers. Which, of course, is also another thing that makes you think that these Panzer Elite chaps are actually formed of a Panzer Brigade because. They were not actually supposed to have MGs in um, any greater fashion. They were actually supposed to be largely equipped with the Sturmgewehr, the assault rifles. So, food for thought there. Hope we do get some Panzer Grenadiers with MGs this time around. In and hopefully that will sort it out. Panzer is quickly shifting about. Although, again, the trick is, of course, to ensure that they remain in heavy cover. But no, he's actually pulling back. Feeling that he might be a bit too overextended. There we go. Flame for a squad pushing in from the south. Nice maneuver right there by no point of exception. Pushes back the Panzer Grenadiers. Of the Panzer Brigade again. Proper Panzer Grenadiers were equipped with MGs again. They had a lot more MGs than anyone sort of non Panzer Grenadier could ever imagine. Which rather allowed them to jump around a bit more with it. And of course, again, the concept of the German infantry squad was again the MG was actually the bit that did most of the damage, most of the shooting. The rifles were actually just there to support the MG. Whereas for the rifle and American squad, that was opposite. The MGs were there to support the rifles, while the rifle did most of the work. So again, fun little thing there. Sadly, not reflected with the Panzer Elite, but again, if it fits with the Panzer Brigade again, then that makes sense. The question is, of course, will the Panzer Grenadiers and Companies 2 fit in with that? And that is the big question. Small gauge. Oh! Catches the Kettenkrad right here. It's on fire. And 
Now he just adds some more fire because why not? No point to exception. Loves handing out fire to anyone in need. Standing about here in open. Clearly Tommy Gaga is a bit unsure where he wants to be standing <laughs> what to do. And there we go. We are seeing a large force pushing in. Rushing into the heavy cover. More squads moving in. Slowing down one squad. More rifle moving in. This is a rather gruesome thing but up close. Chains or no point exception could have a slight advantage. He can fire off a bit more bullets. And there we go now. The Panzer is in fact slowly losing the fight. The rifle are not doing too well. I mean there's a lot of suppressive fight. But there we go. One squad down. One a bit wounded. Another one on the run. And of course another squad pushing a fourth one back. Forcing in a full retreat there. Scout car though is out for Tommy Gaga. That's interesting. He's actually going from the stick company. And the leichte Panzer Spielwagen 221. Fun, fun. Wonder what he could be planning with this. Since he's probably not getting it for its combat abilities, which are rather limited in the game. But Browning Automatics on the way for no point XM because he's probably seen the scout car or the Panzer Gunner, so he's not worrying about armored cars. That's figuring I can get some Browning Automatics. To take the fight to the Hun. Scout car rolls in right there. Does a bit more harassment. Tries to protect the munitions point. At least delays the Americans. But quickly pulls back again. Though keeping an internal watch. With its machine gun mounted on the... F well, thing. And as a harassment attempt by Tommy Gaga. To go for the munitions. To slowly drain him off. Munitions in fact. Trias enters up. That is good. Browning automatics ready. We are seeing a swift movement forwards, but Tommy Gaga and the Panzer Support Command is up. Shall there be Panzer Force and anti tank? Half track. And we are seeing the Kitten Crowd getting a bit pushed back right there. We're losing a fuel sector. A few Panzer guns sneaking up here while another remains here. Lots of Gear 43. Quickly rushing into the house to secure dominance against the Panzer Gunners. Nice, nice, nice. Another squad moving in there. Operation and the rest of the force moves in en masse. And there we go, pinning down the engineers behind the wreckage of the previous Kettenkrat. But they might soon have problems of their own trying to clear out the engineers, of course. And there we go, engineer squad, in fact, could go down. It does. There we go, large American force moving in. And they are cutting off the retreat. For the Panzer Grenadiers and the Kettenkraut, this could be very expensive for Tommy Gaga and the 2nd SS Panzer Division Kampfgruppe. Now you go full retreat. Panzer is taking losses. Kettenkraut desperately trying to get away, but I fear, yes, indeed, went up in flames in seconds. Small engagement out here. Scout coming away, and we are seeing an anti tank half track rolling out. Actually, a command sort of vehicle for the platoon. Slightly heavier equipped than regular half tacks. But not really sort of specifically meant to deal with armor. Just sort of to have a slightly larger gun to dig out any more dug in opponents and for dealing with light vehicles, I imagine. There we go, Raven moving in from the south. More on the way from the Panzer Fort Command. Perhaps a Panzer Fort or a Hotchkiss light tank. Who knows? Repairing the scout car, Panzer Grenadier down. More rushing in. We are seeing defensive operations up, by the way. And a second anti tank half track. What is he intending? And he's getting within the base. Could he be using a lot of focus fire? I mean, it looks like because they're having a rather high rate of actually hitting and blowing up Yankees. Is he? My goodness, he's actually relying on massed focused fire from his anti tank half tracks. That is pretty damn rare. I mean, it's nasty, that's for sure. I mean, every single hit will be a kill, and it fires reasonably fast enough. So, I mean, well used. It can actually drain an American commander of forces. And looks like Chains is calling in some airborne assistance. While the half tanks are moving forwards like very light assault guns to dig out the Yankees. And there we go. Go. And not go, but go. Panzer gun is getting a few kills. Anti-tank half tank getting a few kills. Already there. Ten men dead. In fact, twelve. Mine belt laid down right in front here. Ground out there. Just in case, nice move. By less no point of exception. A Luftwaffe squads are out. So Luftwaffe Doctrine versus Airborne. A surprisingly common matchup, I think. Hmm. 
something was cancelled. But a supply going up, that's probably going to help with manpower up. Keep and sticky bombs on the way for the riflemen. Good, good. Change putting a lot of resources into his riflemen. Although again, he might have some light problems with the anti-tank half-tracks. But there we go, Luftwaffe troops repairing. And securing the munitions. So again, that's how they're going to fit in nicely with the two anti-tank half-tracks. They will be consuming an awful lot of munitions if he actually intends to use focused fire a lot. There we go, Rafa now advancing. Panzer goes Luftwaffe for troops doing what they can. In fact, he even tried to lay down some butt wire. That's nice. Though so far, no focus fire might not have a challenge to actually recharge the ability. Third anti tank half track rolls in. No Panzer fours. I'm actually a bit surprised by that. I would have thought at least one. Perhaps, you know, with some upgrades, some armored skirts will actually also do quite nicely here. Sticky bombs would definitely have a bit of trouble dealing with that. But more rifle are dying as the anti tank half tracks unload an awful lot of rounds into them. Damaged engine. And the Rafna quickly find themselves run off. A bit of harassment over here on the left side with some Panzer guys. Not the best troops to do so. I mean, they do have a slower rate of capture. Plus, of course, if you catch one squad of Panzer guys on its own with a sufficient force, I mean, they can easily go your way. So, in a sense, they're perhaps... They're not really the best harassing troops. They, I mean, they're much more efficient combat troops than they are, for example, dealing doing other jobs sort of not quite related to combat and for that at least they need some upgrades currently they don't have a lot of upgrades I imagine for Tommy Gaga but let's go look at him repairing his anti-tank half ticks with 10, 9 and 1 kills that's about 20 all in all moving up the force and increase squad sizes up that is interesting definitely some rather unorthodox play right here by Tommy Gaga Going in against the Raven right here to give air 43 squads. And suppressing the riflemen. And we are seeing a medic station, I think, going up right here for no point of exception. That's definitely going to help the Americans in the longer run. As, as long as Tommy Gaga doesn't charge in and knock it out with, say, a Panzer IV. So far, though, no sign of that. Instead, he's actually getting more Panzer Grenadiers. And reinforcing the others with the increased squad sizes. And there we go, the first medic and the first medic kill. Luftwaffe troops moving cautiously up the right flank. Engineers laying down mine, so that is a good spot. And another medic down just as he picks up the poor wounded fellow who finally expires. I mean, he can't really be fun to sort of be twice picked up by a medic only to have him sort of pierced by bullets right in front of your eyes while you're in his arms. And what is he now getting from the barracks? I wonder, I wonder. Grenades, I would guess. Rather than moving up. Of course, now increased squad size Panzer Grenadiers. Moving in. Luftwaffe troops getting caught and run off. Now he's actually training more riflemen. That is definitely an interesting move. But again, considering the sort of strategy that Tommy Gaga has chosen, it could actually work. Unless, of course, Tommy Gaga was to consider getting a Panzer IV. And up got grading it with as much anti-infantry business of course that would cause a large amount of problems for no point of exception but so far that does not seem to be the case in fact he's just gotten the Panzer Jäger command Ravner right charging in in large numbers Ravner right getting absolutely blasted into oblivion although they do manage a few sticky bombs off on the half track oh more sticky bombs and a lot of offensive veterans who basically to increase their chance of actually hitting without the up guns and the first anti-tank half-track bites the dust. Last two are dragging out there. Another offensive veterans upgrade. Panzer guys need to roll in. And perhaps an armored car would help a bit against this veritable horde of riflemen. This wave of guns. But so far the response seems a bit lacking from Mr. Gaga. Quite lacking indeed. Now 
Panzergun is doing what they can against the and Another squad moving up behind the flank, but no, not getting suppressed though. That would have otherwise have been a nice move. And Titanic half tech's moving forward again with all their offensive it's veterans' it's glory. <laughs> Medics moving in again. A few wounded already picked up. And a small delaying for Oh, mine's down as well to actually slow down the advance. That is great done there by no point to accept, you know, laying down mines even close to the base. You know, just sort of slow down your opponent's advance. Great, great move. Lovely to see. Panzers in the meanwhile are getting run off. And a vehicle in flat pans actually rolls out. And he meekly goes on the hunt. And Titanic on dropping down in response immediately. Excellent. Ready. And a few assault rifles getting upgraded. Squad here getting absolutely overwhelmed. Will they get away? And there you go. Wixuk. Nella or Menel. It's only a lot of riflemen that chains has. Now advancing under the aegis of the anti-tank gun. Go ahead, sir. Still nothing that could indicate a Panzer for again. I think two, for example, could easily overwhelm an anti-tank gun, for example. Anti-tank have to oh direct hit! Damaged engine! Panzer guys over here doing their best for the assault rifle, but they're simply overwhelmed by the sheer mass of the riflemen. Mine goes soft. Detonated by an out of control anti tank half tank. Other one with 18 kill squads here getting simply suppressed against heavy automatic fire from the Browning equipped riflemen. Spam, spam. Well, you're the guy with three anti tank half tanks and an awful lot of Panzer grenadiers as well. And yet a single Panzer IV which could deal with this spam, for example, or a few armoured cars. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities, Mr. Gaga. It is up to you to choose them. I'm not complaining about it. Well, I've been moving in against the Panzers here. Caught a bit on them. We do see some offensive energy on them, but again, I do think they're simply overwhelmed, outnumbered, outgunned. And some Luftwaffe troops suffer a slightly unpleasant fate on the western part of the front. And these Panzers is me getting torn up, running a gauntlet between all of these angry Americans. A few assault rifle grenadiers moving in. Promotion of veteran sergeants, veteran sergeants to increase veterans and actually making them a bit harder to suppress. Actually providing some protection against BAR's pressure fire, but of course, ultimately not an awful lot. Mine goes off, horrifically maiming some poor bugger. Well, engineers are actually getting gutted by the assault rifle equipment. There we've got offensive veterans, he's actually making them more accurate, making them fire faster. And there, oh, grenades up for change, but he's driving themselves also getting sh shattered by the upgraded Panzer Grenadiers. Another squad moves in, anti tank, and could in fact find itself suddenly cleared out. That could be to the advantage of. Tommy Gargan and Iris the other to move in unimpeded. But no. He stops up. He does not hunt it down. And we are seeing a fresh force from all point except to charge in. Guns blazing. Awaiting orders. Ready to move. Give us your orders. Fall in. A bit thin here. In the center, not a lot to actually stop the Americans from wildly charging forwards. Going moving in anti tank and moving forwards. 24 kills on the anti tank half track. Isn't that nice? Oh, the event advances and takes a direct hit from the anti tank gun. More assault rifles now ready for the Panzer Grenadiers. Going in against the riflemen. A bit of suppressive fire could certainly do a bit though. And there we go, just tearing through grenades. Oh, a bit of. Devious Moon right there, six hacking. 
making it a bit harder to grenade. Nicely done there, of course the new forces arriving with more grenades. Perhaps some suppressive fire, but no, the Panzer Grenadiers charge through it all. And more offensive veterans. This is going, ooh, absolutely not right. Panzer Grenadiers arriving, following up. One squad veteran, two, but it's simply getting shattered, murdered, maimed, and it is gone. Change just lost a veteran, two, Panzer Grenadiers, no, right from the squad. I think he has any Panzer Grenadiers as of yet. Otherwise, he's definitely been cheating. Looks like a squad has been reformed already to replace the one lost. That is good. Except, of course, he lost the veterans in two squad. And he actually doesn't have a lot of other veteran squads at the moment. And there go, pushing forward again. Can he get the anti-tank gun this time? No. More rifle in to delay and buy the anti-tank gun the time and necessary to save itself. Medics, though, are not quite as lucky. No incendio against of Tommy Gaga that could also be used to dig him out from this little fortification. Supply drops getting dropped in. Lots of munitions actually getting loaded up. And the Virulent wants more rives. Rivement behind. Heavy cover suppressed. More moving in. And again, no incendio grenades. Deny them cover. And not enough forces otherwise. We are seeing a Kampfgruppe company now up. Panzer has absolutely run off. Virulent doing what he can. But again, suffering to the anti-tank gun of doom. And again, we do see the advancing assault rifle Panzer Grenadiers. Some now offensive at 22. And a grenade puts a stop to it all. Heavy losses for the men of the 2nd SS Panzer Division. While well, the vehicle then catches some engineers up here. Small engagement here between the Luftwaffe Grand Forces and the riflemen. And the Riven are not faring so well. In fact, they're retreating right in the face of the Luftwaffe. The Wilhelm moving into support. Looks like we fight today. So fun, fun there. Crew, look alive. Rifles, ready for battle. We have the point. We're damn we got a full combat. But so far, not actually much usage for such from the airborne doctrine from no point of exception. And of course, in the actual war, certainly the Germans also lost a lot of things to sort of try and minimize the effect of Allied aircraft. For example, how to hide probably, when to move, when not to move, and other such things, which overall rendered them a lot less effective than they otherwise could have been. Which is, of course, what you hear about a lot less. Certainly, it impeded the Germans' movement somewhat, but of course, I mean, in the overall, the overall damage to the Germans was... Not quite as considerable as some would like to believe. Ooh, good position right there where the rifle can actually dominate quite a bit. And so far the response again from Chains is a bit lacking. We are now, no Tommy Gag I mean, but we are seeing a mortar half track out. Engineer stopped in the middle of the road. Could even go down completely in the middle of the road. And there we go, in fact, utterly lost, utterly murdered. And, ooh... Bloody close with the incendio around, but does not quite hit along the anti-tank gun to get away quite safely. But the second SS has gotten control most of that. We are seeing a 30 caliber arrive, and we are seeing the Panzer Grenadiers arriving up once more. Chaps in the house getting mortared. And the Panzer Grenadiers, of course, with veteran sergeants, can actually survive a lot more from the 30 caliber, and thus they actually end up cleaning it out pretty swiftly. Now having to deal with the rifle, of course, a bit of suppressive fire though still stops them. We are facing a full retreat, but we could see an assault rifle squad go down for Dummy Gaga, but no. They do make it out, and now it's time, of course, for the mortar half tech to escape. And again, if only he had something like, say, a Panzer Force of Armored Cast to help him. In fact, could even just move one up here behind the anti tank gun. Strafing run now open, and he's calling in one on the base! Oh, you devious bugger! Enemy unit down. And there we go! Absolutely devastating, clearing out two squads of Panzer Grenadiers. In fact, he got the assault rifle squads. And again, not entirely sure that's Tommy Gaga as much as in that department either. So, not because, again, some of these squads have actually been reformed from the medic station. And again. There are certainly responses that 
Tommy Gaga could have chosen to all of this, which he hadn't. More incendiary rounds. Burning up some corn, it seems like, and one yank. 30 caliber seems a bit abandoned right there. And Tommy Gaga is definitely in a bit of trouble. His forces are rather depleted. Mortar half tank coming under quite a bit of fire. Direct hit, in fact, from the anti tank gun. Panzer guns advance. Vehicle in advance. And a grenade goes off and ooh, does nothing. But we are seeing assault grenade is now arriving for Tommy Gaga in an attempt to sort of do something. And the Panzer guns attempt to clear out the anti tank gun. Of course, an interesting thing, I mean, we haven't really seen any fault from Jaeger either. I mean, that could also be a good move for Tommy Gaga. I mean, they are excellent anti-infantry units. In particular, with the FG-42, they really can do some awful, awful things to an American opponent's infantry. We have been getting repaired, and mortar rounds going in on the advancing Yankees. More Panzer Grenadiers rolling in. And another squad of rifle reform for change. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A lot of riflemen. We have been arriving, although heavily damaged. That's not really going to help up much longer. And it seems to have been held together by duct tape and prayers. And there we go. The anti tank and actually get sorted out. Small Mirga right there, but the Panzer Grenadiers themselves could find themselves. Very much dead as the crew of the anti-tank gun. Enemy oh. unit? And yeah. they are in fact killed. And another push forwards. More Panzer Gunners, some of them pretty heavily veterans-like. With veterans free offensively, that I mean that's going to do much. And a strafing run goes in. And it gets shot down! Oh no! Killing! No! Oh, he actually managed to kill a medic. Ow, and I think he also in the process lost a squad of riflemen. That was a rather nice crash we saw right there. Setting off a mine even. They're not really killing anyone, except that medic. Still always nice to see. And certainly messed things up a bit for chains. Supplied upgrades both up, that is great. I mean, we're seeing supplied upgrades, we're seeing all upgrades for Riflemen, we're seeing Trier Center, we're seeing Medic Station, all in all, pretty solid infantry performance from Chains. And again, if Tommy Gaga was say to get a few Panzer Force, I mean, he could probably deal with this quite easily, but it's just not happening. Which I think is a definite shame. Instead, he's constantly feeding infantry into a meat grinder. Which is only to the advantage of change at this moment. So of course there's something to remember. Sometimes what you want to do to break a stalemate is you know not constantly stick in the infantry section but actually gather resources until you can get some armor, something a bit more swiftly moving, sort of throw a wrench into his your opponent's plans. There we go, the infantry getting pushed back, Panzer is advancing, a bit of mortar rounds. Even hitting some of the advancing riflemen, that's lovely. Anti-tank gun cleared out, the vehicle went nowhere to be seen to assist. Now that has been done. Panzer is in fact finding themselves pushed off, but yeah. The lack of armor from Tommy Gaga is a bit overwhelming. The vehicle and the Luftwaffe troops continue to haunt in the western half of the map. And we are seeing a tank depot up now for no point of exception. He's tired of playing infantry games now. He wants to finish this. He's getting some tank destroyers up, perhaps, or a Sherman. Either way, something which no Tommy Gaga will not be prepared for at all. Because, no, he's only got infantry with anti-infantry weapons. He's got a Vibrin and he's got a mortar. Nothing of that can actually deal with enemy armor. And in that sense, no point of exception will have a definite advantage. Rather than advancing at the loof of the troops, even getting one poor sword. Once more recruiting the anti tank, of course. I mean, in that case, if that might actually be Tommy Gaga's only hope to actually be able to secure this one, otherwise, again, he's in trouble. We are losing a sector. It's 
not the most effective work right there. Luftwaffe field troops, of course, referring probably more likely to the Luftwaffe field divisions, but could also just refer to any sort of Luftwaffe unit which rather suddenly found itself under the command of a regular army unit, either as replacements or be just as reinforcements. As that was certainly not uncommon either, for example, with the Luftwaffe units which had previously been guarding some sort of flak battery, and then the battery was abandoned or something like that, and then they suddenly, oh, right now we're infantry. There were some cases of that. Usually the Luftwaffe field units did not perform greatly on the Western Front, where they mostly did alright. Also on the Eastern Front, that was most specifically one division, which was also a rather heavily reinforced division. Formed from a Kampfgruppe. Which became the sort of the original reason to form them, because that one actually performed pretty damn great against the Soviets. But more assault rifles moving out. Sturmgewehr, Sturmgewehr. To take on the armies. The Yankee gangsters. And now the Wielbrin is actually rushing. And there we go. The first tank destroyer has arrived. Could be what the Wielbrin is. Oh my goodness. He's just crushed several beneath his chats. Could soon be seeing another one. In fact, he would just even get a Sherman. There we go. They're rushing in. Anti tank and a bit exposed. Tank destroyer rolling in. Medics moving out. Another squad, in fact, could be reformed very soon. And there we go. Anti-tank unsorted out. And there we go. Quickly recruiting it. And turning against the tank. So, of course, another thing you could do since he's also... He's got the resources for Flag 88 and a well-positioned one. Could actually do a lot to sort of halt. No point to exceptions. Few tanks. Hopefully things will behave a bit better now. And there we go, by trying to desperately get away with the tank destroyer. Looks like Tommy Gaga might be hoping on a martyr, but again, will it be enough? And would not a Flak 88 have been faster and sort of been able to sort of stop any advances more immediately? And there we go, tank destroyer actually hunting down the anti-tank gun. And of course, fun thing, American tank destroyer doctrine actually made no difference really between this thing and that thing, which actually meant tank destroyer battalions could be just a bunch of anti-tank guns or tank destroyers like the Wolverine. Unit down. And the anti-tank gun crew suffered a horrific death. And now the mortar after is actually being cut off as well. Tommy Gaga was not fast enough and that could be the end of the mortar support for Tommy Gaga and his second SS Panzerkampfgruppe. Marder 3 is ready. Sticky bombs? No. Actually managed to make it out of there. Marder 3 rolls out. Locks down. And then we go a nice hit on the tank destroyer. Panzer is charging into the right from the ramp and holding on. Looks like he is keen on knocking out that scout car denying valuable munitions to Tommy Gaga. And looks like he will be succeeding. With Marder 3 doing what he can but simply won't be enough. No. Oh, the scout car survived. Will the Marder 3 get the kill or will the Wolverine get out of there? Looks like the Wolverine escapes quite nicely. Trying a bit again, but the pressure is mounting on Tommy Gaga. Rather severely. Every moment a new leak appears and he's having trouble putting it all together. So I know the feeling butterfly mines going down. Not entirely sure if that is what he wants at the moment. Although clearly, nice movement, a uh, usage of it. Let's just briefly pause why there. Because it's in the middle of everything. He's basically ensuring that if no point exception, aka change is trying to take the sort of the most direct route towards anything, he's going to rush straight into a minefield. Sort of that way, perhaps forcing him into a slightly longer, longer route, and of course making things overall a bit more difficult and miserable. Pushing forward again, a large force, lots of riflemen. Six man squad force, in fact. And a second tank destroyer. Panzer is getting pushed back with stuff. Well, heavy losses in that. Bastard makes it out there, and there we go, hitting the minefield. 
But again, sadly, Tommy Gunga can't really master the firepower to stop it. He sadly never went for something which had a more direct anti infantry role, but at the same time being a lot less vulnerable to the rifles, like again, say, a Panzer IV infantry support. And strafing runs, stopping quite a few Panzers, in fact, leaving a field of broken and bleeding bodies. Followed up by a tank strike rolling through. Marta Free, quite quickly on maneuver, there's still the anti tank gun, but it manages. So we escape the field of fire of most of this. Another tank shot rolls in, hits a few mines. And the mortar half tank down. M10 though goes up. Scored a kill right there by the Marder. And the scout car still has not been repaired and is lost in a second. Fuel tank lit ablaze. Absolute carnage and absolute collapse of the front line right there for Tommy Gaga. So many, many losses. And there's not much left of this minefield either. The vehicle vent is still there, and interesting enough, it's been left rather much to the flank instead of supporting the infantry, where it might actually have done better. Whereas again, the flank should probably have been handled by an armoured car, and not a flak panzer. Now, of course, rather exposed to attempt tank destroyer moves in, and the vehicle vent is not looking. Main gun destroyed. Surprisingly, how much? And one more shot. And there we go. Good night. But the Mala scores the kill and finishes off while another one rolls out. And Jane still has quite a few riflemen on the field. Overall, Tommy Gaga once more pushing forwards again. Tommy Gaga a bit more vulnerable. And trying to repair that tank destroyer. And looks like change is getting a bit desperate. He's in fact sending in a two man man from C3 rifleman squad. And he's not caring about losses anymore. He's just going full Soviet. He's no longer change his comrade chains. Perhaps. Our munition stores are under attack. But things are definitely looking a bit slow for Tommy Gaga. Again, I do think a nag of armored cars or a Panzer IV, I think the Panzer IV would have been a bit of a choice, has hurt him. Plus, of course, he could also have benefited from, say, some forcing. A bombing run goes in! Oh, the anti tank gun went down, plus a piece of the. Most of those survives, but nonetheless, that anti tank gun was not a happy loss. Marta rushing in. Oh, oh, both go out of control. Oh dear. Tommy Gaga is clearly a bit upset. Has lost his cool. I'm going a bit Gaga. Trying to get at least one engineer squad, and he succeeds. Ray, but losses are rather crippling. And still not a single Forge Mega between. In fact, there's been no airborne or Forge Mega for that matter from either side. And of course, fun fact, while a lot of people seem to insist in you know, the airborne or for that matter, Forge Mega should be dropped in from abort most of the time. They actually fought on the ground and arrived on their feet or truck. The airborne hole whole airborne insertion part was actually a bit of the rarer things that actually happened in general. Panzers all up behind the wreckage of the vehicle, but they are quite simply outgunned. And again, there's not a lot left for Tommy Gaga. Question is, of course, what will he be doing now? What shall he do? And let's just beat this up the before Flaps decides to take another fun trip. And what is this? We're actually seeing a Sherman now, but for no point to exception, we're seeing Tommy Gaga floating an awful lot of resources. Has he completely given up all hope? Rifleman squad down there. Panzer has secured a small kill, a small victory, in fact. Still there's an awful lot of riflemen still left. The 
The enemy has moved against and it's just floating manpower. Hansk is doing what they can right here, but they are themselves once more run off. Could he be hoping for a Panther battle group, but he hasn't researched it yet? So many questions, so many things. And clearing out the wreckage just in case Tommy Gaga decides for the bag of Tiger. And Archer losing everything and a lot of rifle there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That medic section's definitely done a lot of good for him. Oh, for shame. For shame. That's just not right. In fact, let's just stop on that. No, I mean, Tommy Gaga has simply lost, including his... Well, yes. Anyways, game over right there. And we are seeing the Panther battle go right, but again, simply too little, too late. Overall, of course, lost. Had a nice start, some interesting strategy, but the problem was there was a huge gap, and that was the one called infantry, dealing with it in a manner that the, infantry had a, the enemy infantry had a sort of solid manner of dealing with or trouble dealing with and again he could have gone for armor cast that could have helped a bit with the flanks but again he should have had some pans of force out but they never came and I have no idea why he didn't get it had he done that he could have gone that we could have stopped the infantry gun two out and that would also have dealt with the anti-tank in a much more solid manner and really caused some problems for chains but they never arrived and I really think the solid lack of a pans of force pretty much was lost Tommy Gaga the match of course a bit the blobbing but ultimately the lack of some armor to take on the infantry so uh, there you go I mean r again overall interesting strategy not a bad one but again there was a huge gap in it which rather allowed chains pretty much the method to victory so there you go hope you enjoyed this match hope you learned something from it if you did why not subscribe to your friends and if you didn't well why not send a replay of your own this is Imperial Dane saying cheers